Agriculture has mostly been influenced by policies made by government around the world. This is the Ghanaian farmer. My name is Enyuna Mwanye. Here in the world, or in Africa, specifically in Ghana, it is estimated that 60 to 80 percent of food is produced by women, despite the lack of equal rights and opportunities. Today, globally, every person, every man or woman, everybody is celebrating the International Women's Day. And the Ghanaian farmer is all the way in the Keto North district to celebrate the day with the numerous women who are here, who happens to be smallholder farmers, growing different line of crops, meaning vegetables, cereals, and food. As part of our activities, we caught up with the parliamentary Spara candidate for political events. Honorable, I'm going to call him Honorable because very soon he's going to be an Honorable, Adam Agbana, to chit chat with him about his knowledge about agriculture and its constituency. What do the women or every farmer in this village typically produce? What are his plans for farmers in this constituency? I'm going for a quick bit that when I come back, I would engage Mr. Agbana. Stay tuned, I'll be right back after this. Staying. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the Ghanaian farmer. Share your views and your talk with us on all our social media platforms. Mr. Agbana, thanks for joining us. Thank you, and your name, and happy International Women's Thank Day. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure of meeting you finally. I'm happy to meet you yes. too, and welcome to Ketu North Constituency. Thank you very much. Very beautiful place with potentials for agriculture, and we are happy to have you here. Thank you. So let's start with your upbringing before we moved or zoom into farming and politics. When we mention Adam Agbena, tell us about where you were born, your schooling days, and how come you were here today? Well, I was born and bred here in Ketu North. I was born in Georgia at the St. Anthony's Hospital. I started my basic school at the Hipper LA. At a point, continued to Daewoo International in Tajewu, and later, proceeded to the junior high school in Accra, then back to my only school in the Volta region, and then on and on to tertiary level. My upbringing in this constituency is a very interesting journey because I was born to uh, parents who were resident here in the constituency. My mom is a petty trader and a farmer. At one point in time, if I can recall it uh, rightly, she was even nominated for district best uh, farmer for oh, pepe wow. for vegetables okay. and so my mom is a farmer my dad was a driver but also had farms then our upbringing we were brought up in such a way that we loved agriculture everything around us uh, was agriculture i was uh, my one of my responsibilities as a little boy was to take our animals talking about uh, goats to sheep to 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 um, to the go and yeah to the field for yeah. grazing and that was a job that I enjoyed so much okay. because uh, as a young man uh, I mean the opportunity to own these animals for some because we have this interesting arrangement where even if you're looking after these animals for someone when they um, they they deliver or they give birth or something. You, they have an arrangement where the first one belongs to you, then the subsequent ones belong to the owner and all of that. So by age 14, 15, I can say I had quite a number of animals that, that, that belonged to me. So it was a source of income. And so I grew up on the farm. You go, and again, even in the basic school, we had school farms. And so at dawn, you wake us up mobilize all of us as students to go and weed the school farm and plant. So these are my experiences with agriculture at a very tender age. And I believe that it is one of the reasons why even at this age, I'm still very passionate about agriculture. And I think that for our constituency to develop, one key sector that we must focus on is the agricultural sector. Okay. Um, so what did you study in the university? In the university, I studied political science and philosophy for my first degree. Then I studied development finance for my first master's. My second master's, I did economic policy management. Then I also had uh, a training in postgraduate project management. And so these were my areas now, doing a bit of law and doing P 
phd in public policy and all of that and so i have a very diverse background uh, when it comes to the area of education but agriculture has always been a part of me i still own a farm okay. and still have animals i was I about have, asking um, that yeah yeah, yeah I, do, I do i do i do okay, have farms. how many acres a community i have about six acres mm -hmm. of, of farm i okay. do a bit of ginger here right. i do a bit of uh, um, pepper and other vegetables okay. six acres just a few minutes away from here the community is called Tokbo. Right. and i also have three acres of mango plantation right here in this constituency that's quite well and so yeah i, I, I own some well done. I, and I have I, some I animals i still have some animals as well <laughs> okay yeah i have some cattle not too many though but i have some cattle still have some goats all of that mostly uh, even though the goods i have quite a number i'm not producing it for commercial purposes i do it basically to help you know first festival uh, when we are in the festive season christmas easter we give some out as gifts to stakeholders in the constituency some for family consumption and all of that but i hope to venture into commercial animal farming quite soon because nice. it's quite an interesting area nice very Talk profitable <laughs> Very. Yeah. Talking about zooming into commercial very soon. If you concentrate on this K2 North district, typically your farmers are they largely commercial or smallholder farmers? No, most of them are smallholder farmers. Okay. We have the potential to transform them to become big uh, commercial farmers because we have the land. We have no challenges with uh, land litigation here. Very few communities have land litigation issues. The chiefs are even willing to give out more land. Our lands are very fertile, but the capital for the investment is where the problem is. Many of them still rely on rainwater. They rely on the very archaic means of agriculture, the use of the hoe and all of that, the cutlass hoe and all, because they don't have what it takes to to invest machines. in the modern machines yeah. like even tractors and all of that. Because they don't have the capital, okay. and so we have largely smallholder farmers. But I think that because the potentials are there, we need big investment, and that's why I'm excited about this particular investment where we are conducting right. this interview, Maflex, yes. and I think they are doing a great job. They are paving the way for others to know that it is possible yes. to turn Keto North constituency into an agriculture hub. Exactly. Now, today happens to be a special day. Yes. So let's look at the farmer ratio in the continent. Is it made of huge women or is it made of men? I mean, look at the ratio. Well, it's, it's, it's difficult to tell because we have a unique situation where okay. when you have a farm, mm -hmm. the entire family works on it. Mm -hmm. So more or less, these farms are owned by the families. Okay. And so in a situation where a man owns the farm, it belongs to him and the wife, and the women are mostly involved in the, in the plowing, the planting and harvesting. Okay. But the real hard work of weeding and others now mostly is done by the men. Okay. So that, that is the situation. But I know a lot of women who are into farming, even single mothers, except that they do it in very small quantities, like I said, because of the lack of the equipment. These women are mostly peasant farmers, and that doesn't really help. And okay. So they do it to feed the family and to sell a little in the market, but okay. they are not commercial. Right. Now, it is also estimated that the average age of a Ghanaian farmer is around 55 and above. Yes. And there's this call of young people should venture into farming, venture into farming. But the willingness, the desire is there. However, they keep telling you the stories you hear has to do with lack of infrastructure, lack of mechanization, capital. so capital and land issues. So we are not attracted. But you are, you know, studying your second degree, doing your PhD. You still have farm on the side. Yeah. What do you think we should be doing to attract the youth to farm? I think that we need to reorient young people, especially from the basic level because we have a very practical challenge. And the challenge is that at the basic level, agriculture is made to look as a punishment to these young people. So when a student is talking in class or has offended, has done something not lawful, then you are asked to go and weed the farm. 
the school farm or you are given weeding or something related to agriculture as a punishment. So at that level, the orientation you are giving young people is that that field is not attractive. I think we need to let people understand that there's a sports is encouraging schools where we spend Fridays, maybe Friday afternoons, not going to class but engaging in sporting activities. We can spend Friday mornings engaging in farming related activities. Then, at the, that's from the very basic level, then they will understand that farming can be a noble career. Secondly, we need to make examples of the likes of Mr. Kamasa because they are making it big in agriculture. But for the young person, they want to try it. Every young person wants to prosper. And so when farming, they look at their parents, their grandparents who are into farming. And because they are peasant farmers and they are making nothing out of it, even to afford three square meals off the season is a problem. They will not be encouraged to venture into agriculture. So we need to make the successful examples of the likes of um, Dr. Kamasa. Dr. Kamasa and the others and let people know that farming can really be a noble profession. That's the only way we can encourage young people to enter into agriculture. And then lastly, every young person is interested to make ends meet. And so we must, as policymakers, ensure that when they go into the farming, the value chain is, is made a bit more flexible. So you go into farming, is there a ready market? And then the, 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 the various value chains must be explained. And what we talk about agriculture is not all about being on the farm. It's also, you must be involved in the value chain at one point in time. I know people who are only selling seed. I know people who are just into uh, ensuring that they spread across these uh, irrigation systems, those who are adding value, uh, those who are buying from the farmers uh, as middlemen, taking it to buffer stock in other places. All these things are part of the agriculture value chain. Let's sell the value chain and not just farming. And people will be interested in joining, I believe. Okay. Now we'll focus again in this constituency. Yes. This is where you come from. Um, the one thing people also talk about has to do with land issues. Yes. How is the land tenure system like? Especially with my diasporians who are watching. We have a lot of Votarians who call me every day. And you, I want to come down to invest in water region or this area. How is access to land like? Well, when you pass through the right channels, our land tenure system here is largely controlled by the chiefs, the chiefs. our chief or traditional institutions. And so for every community, when you come and speak to the chiefs or the traditional rulers, they have a way of engaging the landowners or the families that own the lands for them to either lease out the land or sell it out to you completely. When you pass through the traditional rulers, you are less likely to confront any challenges with land litigation and all of that. So it's, it's good. I am very happy to say on record that I have engaged many of the chiefs in this constituency and they are always excited at the opportunity to invest in agriculture here. They have the lands, they are willing. If you ask me to get you 2,000 acres, 3,000 acres today, I would direct you to chiefs who are willing to help me to let go because they want to see more investment in agriculture. They want opportunity for employment. Look at what uh, Maflix is doing here. Today is International Women's Day and women are getting access to free national health insurance card registration and renewal. That's, that's a plus. It's like a CSR, a corporate social responsibility of the farm. There are over 140 people who come to work on this farm and they get paid either daily basis, some on monthly basis. So every community is looking for this, this kind of investment and so they are interested and they want to do it. But the opportunity to do it is not there. And that's why the chiefs are always calling out that, come through them. And when you see people like us, who easily facilitate at no fee okay. for you to come and invest, because we want the investments of in this course. constituency. Of course. Now, you may mention that your parents are farmers. Yes. Growing up as a young uh, boy or man, you have to take the livestock to the field for grazing. Even as we speak, you have yes. mango and other farms. Yeah. Now, we talk about capacity building, we talk about grooming or training our farmers to catch up with the modern things happening yeah. in the line of farming. As a young person who has stepped outside the boundaries of water region to go to Accra, meet other stakeholders in the agri sector, and then you keep coming in and out, how are you also shaping your farmers to catch up with the trend? What are you doing in that area? Everyone who works on my farm has received some sort of training from the CSIR. Uh, you know, they have an agreed division that 
trains regularly, people on livestock and crop production and all of that. Then I'm also aware that Dr. Kaman says uh, Maflix here, they also conduct some training and capacity building for farmers. We've had arrangements and I'm happy to announce in the coming weeks, a number of farmers will be benefiting from that kind of capacity uh, building and training here. And so we, we, are, we are doing that. I'm looking forward to more partnerships so that beyond myself and my farmers, other farmers in Keto North constituency can benefit from that kind of training because it's very vital. Okay. It's not all about having access to capital. You need the knowledge, knowledge on modern farming techniques, knowledge on even how to plant. It, it, it's, it's basic yeah. because many of our farmers are used to the old ways of doing things. They are not even aware uh, what to do to the land. People are still engaging in um, uh, bushfires mm -hmm. or burning the bush and all of that. This, these things are not modern practices. No. We need to continue training them and I believe that we are on track. It's, it's, it's about more partnership okay. and people will benefit from oh, this right. things. Yeah. My next question would be, I'm going to play the devil's advocate. Yes. How come you didn't focus on being a commercial farmer than wanting to attach politics to what you're doing? How would being into politics help you develop your community? And especially, I'm interested in the farmers. How would, is it going to impact or affect their life positively? I, I, I think that all of what we do revolves around the political process. Okay. It's important to get people who are passionate about agriculture into key decision-making places like parliament. Parliament is a place for representation. Farmers must be represented. We have a number of lawyers there. We have a number of accountants. We have a number of other professionals. How many people are there that can boast of, of, of being farmers and speaking for the farmer? But the past, and so, the past, the past minister was once a representative Yes, so we and, and so, 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 so we, need, we, need, we need more representation. Today, when we go to Parliament, we have a number of women in Parliament. Okay. But why are we crying about representation? Because it's not adequate. Okay. So you must always get more so that they make their key political decisions. Secondly, politics is, is, is a reflection of our society. I believe strongly that when we get the right kind of leaders, leaders who are passionate about the people, leaders who care about farmers, about children of farmers, about providing support schemes and systems for people around in their constituencies, you will get the kind of improvement that, 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 that you have. You go to some constituencies, members of parliament have gone to the extent of buying tractors to provide subsidized uh, commercial tractor services to yes. their farmers. Yes. You go to some constituencies, members of parliament have recruited trained and supported with financial, uh, with, with cash, some farmers to go and engage in commercial farming. And so these things are a way of revolutionizing the agricultural sector in the constituencies. And that is why it is good to also have people who are passionate about agriculture in the space, in the political space. So we're about to wrap up our interview, yes. but in your view, what would be your take of the agricultural activities in your constituency and what do you think that the farmers are looking forward to to help them scale up on what they are doing now? I think that when you take the population of Keto North, more than 90% are engaged in agriculture, okay. but they are mostly peasant farmers. Okay. We need to find a way of commercializing agriculture in the mm. constituency. And for me, that is a big challenge that all of us as policymakers and advocates must focus on. Right. Farmers are doing well, they produce enough for us to feed and all of that, but they must see exactly. some benefits, exactly. economic benefits yes. of their farms. Yes. You see people who have been engaged in farming for 20 years, 30 years, and they can't even afford any decent homes mm. or build decent houses for themselves. And that's terrible. Yeah. And so we need to commercialize it. And I think we need to just transition from the smallholder farmers to commercial farming. Okay. What are the challenges? Capital, capacity building, because they don't, many of them don't like, they don't have the knowledge mm. on what to do to make it commercial. Mm. Then also provide 
market, ready market for them in terms of the value chain. For example, about three, four years ago, watermelon became hot cake in Keto North. Almost every farmer started planting or growing watermelon. They got good watermelons here. Our land, water, it was good. But they were not getting the market. So by the next season, the interest in watermelon goes down. Doing the right. As we speak, okay. some people are venturing into mango. Okay. Some are doing tomato. Some are doing pepper. After a while, the interest dwindles when they don't get the market. Okay. People are doing sweet potato now. Right. So we need to provide the ready market so that whatever they are doing, when you are done, you, might, you are sure that There's a ready when you are market. harvesting, there is ready market. Okay. I think that will also help with the commercialization. Then right. lastly, uh -huh. My proposal is for investors to do this cash for crops, where you bring money to the farmer, ask them to plant, then when they are done, you buy from them. Okay. Cash for crops. So I give you, let's say, 10,000 Ghana cities, do 10 acres of cassava, and the agreement is that you are coming to sell to me. When you are selling to me 10 acres, and maybe it is worth 50,000, I deduct the 10,000 I've given you from the 50 and pay you 40. Oh, okay. It's also a good way, cash for crops. Okay. It's a good way of helping them with their capital to do their work. I'm told there are other nine people contesting you. Yes. What are your chances? Are you they are most very scared? Good. They are all very good people. All of them can be good MPs. But I'm very confident that I'm winning. Okay. Because we've done our work, we are working, and people recognize loyalty. The party recognizes, the delegates, mm -hmm. the executives, they do recognize who can better represent them in parliament. Right. And I believe that by God's grace, I will be the chosen one. Okay. A message to them, simple. They know what to do. They know what to do. Yes. Now, lastly, I also heard there are a lot of young people who are contesting for press, um, parliamentary uh, seat and all that. Most, most are said, is it for impact for the community or is it to enrich yourself? What will be your take on that? Are you going to parliament to enrich yourself or your community? I, if, if I want to enrich myself, I, I probably think that politics will not be the best route for me. You're sure? Yes, yes. With my level of exposure, the things that I've seen, I probably should come and do commercial farming. Okay. Like what my brother, Dr. Kamasa, is doing. Mm -hmm. The point is that I don't think that politics necessarily gives you uh, access to quick wealth. That is for people without vision. That is for people without integrity. Some of us have been in leadership for a while and we have demonstrated consistently that we are in to make the impact. And that is why we have given ourselves out to be elected. And I believe that we are here to change the narrative for our generation. Because these young people we have today, the future belongs to us. And the future is today, it's now. It begins now. We cannot afford to do what used to be the case. We must change the narrative, inspire people to enter into politics, and I believe that together we can make the impact that we are seeking. I am in to make impact. I believe I have integrity to protect. That's why we are here to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's I wish lovely you all the best. You. Thank you. Thank you and so much. And uh, we will be there to jubilate with you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Amen. Proud. That will be 13th May. You are invited. Come and Thank cover. You. Thank you very much.